a country where sugar was the primary source of revenue for many years. It was the chief export, but sugar is not so sweet. I'm Marsha with Short Circuits, and this is week five of Feeling Confident Wearing Less. We're talking about sugar because everybody knows that sugar in excess causes excess weight. But did you know that sugar is eight to 10 times more addictive than cocaine? And the reason is we are hardwired to crave sugar. Sugar is energy, it's what we need to survive. Thousands of years ago, our ancestors would eat as much as they could when things were plentiful, and then they would tap into their stored reserves, their stored fat reserves, when things were a little bit rough. When we eat sugar, there's a chemical that's released in the brain called dopamine. It makes us feel good, it makes us feel satisfied. It's the same chemical that's released when we accomplish something significant, like winning a race or a fight, or even having good sex. So sugar is highly addictive because we want that feeling of satisfaction, we want that dopamine, but it takes more and more sugar to produce the same amount of dopamine. I've seen studies that show that it's easier to quit smoking than to quit sugar. Diets that are chronically high in sugar, create hormone disturbances and brain changes. They've been associated with behavioral change in children such as ADHD. And they're also associated with diseases like Alzheimer's and diabetes and obesity. The same diseases that are caused by inflammation because sugar also produces inflammation. So how much sugar is too much? Well, the FDA and the WHO recommend that we only get 10 teaspoons of added sugar a day or about 10% of our daily calories from sugar. It's pretty easy to get to 10 teaspoons before you even leave the house on a morning. A bowl of cereal has about five teaspoons of sugar. I looked at some yogurt today that was in the fridge. It had 30 grams of, of sugar. If you divide that by four, that's seven teaspoons of sugar. Juice is loaded in sugar. An eight ounce glass of orange juice has about five to six teaspoons of sugar. So if you just had cereal and juice, you'd be at 10 teaspoons already before you went out the door. So instead of having cereal and juice for breakfast, a much better idea would be to make an omelet. You've got your egg whites for protein, your egg yolks for fat. You're gonna throw in maybe a few handfuls of spinach and mushrooms and tomatoes, and you have a wonderful breakfast and you're not starting out with all that excess sugar. So you're not setting yourself up for cravings throughout the rest of the day. We can get back to basics and eat real food. We're talking about vegetables, protein, good fats. Remember, we're looking for wild, organic, free range where possible. So we're getting higher omega-3s and less omega-6s. We're trying to avoid packages and boxes because we know they're gonna contain more omega-6s and we're, they're also gonna contain more sugar. And in terms of the different kinds of sugars, I always get asked that question, what about agave and honey, are they better? Well, honey is known to have antibacterial properties, but in terms of how your body breaks it down, it breaks it down the same way as any kind of sugar. So brown sugar is not better than white sugar necessarily, um, and honey and agave and all of those uh, sugar alternatives are all treated the same way, it ends up being the same glucose, fructose, um, same way your body handles them all the same way. So you just want to make sure that overall your sugar intake is lower. And looking at um, high fructose corn syrup, that's the, the big bad monster. It is not treated any differently in your body either. It's broken down just like sugar. But the reason that it's bad is because it's everywhere. So it makes food taste better and it's cheap. So manufacturers put it in all kinds of foods. In terms of artificial sweeteners, I think the jury's still out on those. They haven't been around long enough to be really studied to see what the long-term side effects are. Studies have shown that people who consume a lot of artificial sweeteners are actually heavier than those who don't because what happens is your body is expecting sugar and then it produces insulin. Your blood sugar drops and then you're hungrier. So a lot of people who consume a lot of artificial sweeteners eat more, they overcompensate with food and they end up gaining more weight than people who just eat regular sugar. Stevia is probably the safest artificial sweetener. It's the most natural one on the market. I find it has a bitter taste, so I don't like adding it to any of my foods. And one of the things I've done recently, at least over the last two years, is taken sugar out of my coffee. I took it out gradually. I started, I used to have two teaspoons every morning and then I went down to one and then I took it away. I still left the cream in. And in the last year I've taken the cream out. So I really start my day without any sugar whatsoever. It's black coffee. I still get the caffeine that I need, but I don't take in the sugar. So I don't have those cravings for sugar um, the rest of the day. Because when you start your day off with sugar, you definitely, that addictive property of sugar kicks in and you definitely crave more sugar the rest of the day. 
Next week, I'll be putting together a recap of everything I've talked about in weeks one to five, so you're gonna get a big picture. Remember to share this content with anyone who you feel could benefit from it. And don't forget to check out my website at marciaghughes.com where I have weekly workout recommendations as well. Until I see you next Monday, eat less sugar and get moving. <music>